Shut up and sit down. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to my channel. I am the Cyber Reef Guru. I appreciate you watching. Uh, so this video is going to cover how to use Inkscape and Fusion 360 to create a, you know, a sign or a plaque of letters that are all connected together. Uh, so uh, you've probably seen these before, at, like craft fairs or whatever, you know, spelling out different sayings or whatever short little uh, saying. So uh, I've seen these before, and I have a project that I've been working on that I, I thought maybe that that type of technique would work um, pretty well for. And so I just wanted to show you how I did it. Uh, so uh, first I'll start, uh, the video will start in uh, Inkscape um, and I will show you pulling the letters in, turning them into paths, manipulating them, and then connecting them all together. And then uh, we'll import that uh, SVG into uh, Fusion 360 and I'll show you quickly how to extrude it and then uh, create some cam operations uh, to produce the output. So uh, let's, let's get on with it. Before jumping into Inkscape here, I just wanted to quickly show you a font book on the Mac. Uh, this is a program that allows you to preview and load more fonts into your computer. Uh, I'm quite certain Windows has something similar. Um, I just don't know what it is. I don't use Windows. Uh, so if you happen to know, you know, leave it in the comments down below. Uh, but what font book allows you to do again is preview the fonts. And what I found is the use of the fix width fonts here uh, to be the best for what we're going to do. Um, you can get crazy and use all sorts of different fonts uh, and produce more interesting results, especially if you're 3D printing versus uh, cutting it out manually or with a CNC machine. A lot of the more kind of wispy fonts with the big curly cues uh, will print 3D print well. They will not uh, cut well because a lot of the, the pieces are very small and close together. Uh, so in this case, um, I found this, this Menlo font uh, works pretty well, especially in the bold. Uh, the uh, PT Mono also works well. Uh, just be concerned here, like some of the letters, like the C here has two flat edges, so when you bump, say, it, like maybe for example a D right up against it, it, it won't look like a C anymore in some cases, so you want to leave some gaps. So I'm going to actually show that to you. So let's just go ahead and switch over to Inkscape here. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is add a couple letters. I'm going to do uh, my uh, initials. Uh, CRG and I'm just gonna type them in one by one separately um, let's see R G and now the reason you want to do them separate is is to allow you to move them around individually and make them touch or not touch as you see fit uh, now uh, Inkscape does default to the the kind of stock font I think it's Arial if I remember properly uh, but over here under uh, uh, the font tool, you can click this guy here, the icon. I already have the window open here. Uh, for whatever reason in Inkscape, uh, if you were to click that icon and it's, and it's minimized on the side, it won't open it up. It won't, the accordion expand won't work, which I think is kind of weird. Um, all right, so we'll select Menlo here. You can see in the little preview window here, the, the font uh, does change. And then we'll select bold. Uh, you can use bold italic too, that looks kind of interesting for certain things, but I definitely found bold or bold italic works best uh, for what we're doing here. Now the, in this case the font spacing doesn't, uh, doesn't really matter um, uh, because we're going to manually adjust the kerning and the spacing and whatnot, so apply. We're going to click apply and then click close. You can see how the fonts change there. Now you can get all crazy uh, with your spacing if you wanted to do something, uh, let's see, if you wanted to do something kind of cool like this. Um, that would be kind of interesting and fun. The only uh, uh, serious recommendation I would have is make sure that there is a straight, uh, they are flat across the bottom. And the easiest way to do that is to use the align tool, which is this little icon right here. Um, select, say for example, if we wanted to do this, select these two, um, you click on that icon, but again, I already have it open. So let's see, align, um, and say align by bottom right there. Um, and that just puts them both flat on the bottom. And so you can do something kind of nifty and neat like this, uh, where the letters are uh, overlapping, um, or you can just make them completely flat, which is what I'm going to do um, on the bottom, just uh, for sake here. And let's see, we want to give a little bit space again between the C and the R. Um, that actually looks 
pretty decent in terms of spacing. So what I'm trying to do is just visually um, create a gap, uh, enough of a gap between the letters that it's not too odd, uh, but the gap that kind of looks similar in size. Now you could use the distribute function here, um, and I'll show you if you do a, a distribute here, uh, say from the left side, that would probably work best. See how it slid the R over just a little bit? So that gives you a perfectly even distributed size between the letters. Um, and let's just select them again and then make sure we are still aligned on the bottom. So there we go. Now they're all aligned across the bottom. And you can again click any one of these. I found distributing on the edges, um, especially the left edge, uh, to be uh, work the best for what we're doing here. So. Letters are evenly distributed and uh, flat on the bottom. So now what we want to do is we want to create um, the connections. Uh, you could just simply overlap the letters if you wanted to. The problem we have here with the C is if you start overlapping it, like for example, uh, if we were just to put the, the C and the R or something like this together, right? Um, you can see how the C, you're not sure what it is. It kind of just looks like a handle for RNG. <laughs> uh, control Z, Control Z. That's not what we're looking for. So in this case, we're going to add a manual connection. We're going to do that by creating a box, a square here. Um, and so we will extend the square in the middle here and then do something like right about there. Um, so now in this case, I have, the, I have the background set to red and you can see, so you could see it a little bit better. And so we'll zoom in. Uh, you don't want this to be too far off into the letter land. Um, doesn't really matter too much to be quite honest, um, but it does uh, make things easier later on down the road. Okay, so there you go. Uh, you can see where the, the, the overlap is here uh, and here. Um, and so the, we're gonna create some connections here. So the very next thing you wanna do, this is the magic part, if you wanna look at it that way, because these letters are uh, just letters. And let me go ahead and do this. Let me select the letters. I wanna control D for duplicate them and I'm just gonna slide them down here. So we have we have our letters uh, at the bottom there if we ever need to return to them for some reason. But now we wanna select our letters, um, go under path and say object to path. Right now the letters are objects and we wanna create them. Uh, we wanna turn them into a path, so we select path. Now when it did this, uh, you can tell that they are um, the paths because if you click the little node editor right here, um, edit paths, you can see now they are nodes. Whereas if you click the letter, um, you don't see the little nodes like you do for the C up here. Um, so now if you wanna manually edit the nodes, uh, you can certainly do that. One thing to note, uh, I'm not sure why, uh, why Inkscape is doing this, to be quite honest with you, but if you click the letter and go look down here at the bottom, it says group one object in layer one. Um, so it has automatically grouped all these nodes together uh, for whatever reason. And so to do the next operation, which is the combine, uh, it won't do that with a group. So I'm gonna select all the letters, go under path and say, um, nope, under object. Yes, and say ungroup. And so now if we collect it, uh, click the, the C for example, it says path 18 nodes. Um, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so now we will select all the letters and the boxes and we will say object, I'm sorry, path union. And you can see what it did is it, uh, the, the red boxes are gone and if I click on the node editor, you can see that it's a completely connected set of lines uh, created by paths and nodes. Uh, so that's what we're looking for. So now they're connected and so when we bring it into say um, into a slicer or into the uh, CAD program. It's one SVG, all connected, closed group, which is what we're looking for. Okay, so real quick, I'm just gonna do some uh, node magic on this. Um, let's see, control, click. Yeah, I wanna make these rounded nodes. Um, uh, that's, oh. Okay, well, hey, that's not really what I was shooting for here but that looks cool and I like it. So we're gonna leave it. Uh, we're gonna make it, uh, click on this guy and pull it out, make the, the R just a little bit wider, but I like that hook, that, that looks very cool. Uh, this guy here, don't so much like that guy, so we'll pull these nodes together and just make a little U here, um, something like that. Um, that doesn't look too bad. Um, I don't know that I really like that hook, but we'll see. All right, uh, we'll go back here, smooth these guys out. Click twice, click twice, there you go, 
pull this in a little bit. Uh, definitely want to pull that guy in more. All right, we'll select these two nodes, pull them up a little bit. Pull that in just a tad. Okay, um, let's see what we got going on here. That doesn't look too bad. So there's our connected letters. You can see the C R G, right? Cyber Reef Guru. Um, this guy here, I'm not sure that I, I am uh, a huge fan of this kind of double hook thing here. So if we were to smooth that guy out, that guy out. Yeah, I don't know that I like that any better. So we can undo. Maybe it's just a matter of this guy being there you go see that looks better so uh, uh, it looks better to me <laughs> um, so putting these two nodes on the same level path just makes it look better but I do like that hook that we created in the R's kind of got that nice little arc there and you can see the difference now between uh, what it was and, and what it is now um, you can continue to futz with these if you want to make them more or less uh, you know quote unquote artistic um, but this is good enough for what we are shooting for but the, the key thing here is we have one connected path, one closed group, um, one object here. So we will save that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, import this in Diffusion um, and uh, we'll go from there. So stand by. Okay, so we are in Fusion here. Um, I started a new design and the first thing we want to do is actually create a sketch. Um, actually, no, we want to do is we want to insert the, the SVG that we just recently created. So we'll select the plane, which is going to be uh, the, the bottom plane uh, in this case. And then uh, we will select the SVG, which is, I called it this guy. Um, and then where did it go? Oh, all the way down there. Okay, so now we need to move it up. We don't need to move it up. I want to move it up. I want that down a little bit, so let's do uh, 35305. All right, that looks good. Stop sketch. So now we have our sketch in in Diffusion. Uh, I've, I've made other videos about uh, importing SVGs into Fusion before. Um, if you want to check those out, I'll, I'll link them, uh, you know, up in the corner or something. Uh, but now we have our, our sketch in. Uh, we can make a profile here, or I'm sorry, we can extrude it if we want, or we can just leave it uh, this way. We'll extrude it just for giggles here, so we can get some sense of what we're doing here. So we're going to extrude it. Uh, I, I like extruding it down a negative 0.95, which is a roughly the, the thickness of the wood that we'll be using in this case to cut it out. You can see what the 3D model part looks like here. Um, pretty straightforward. There's no, uh, not a whole lot of magic. Uh, one thing that I did do in uh, Inkscape, kind of off camera as it were, is I scaled this out. Um, originally, the letters were very small. They were 32 point uh, font, which means they were only about uh, less than half an inch in total size. So I scaled it out to be uh, roughly four and a half inches tall and uh, I think nine inches wide. Uh, to give us some nice, big, kind of blocky, beefy letters. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so here we go. We're going to switch over into cam mode. Um, <clears throat> first thing we want to do is we want to add a setup, a new setup. Uh, we will do, uh, yes, uh, we use the body from reference. Uh, the origin is going to be from the, uh, yes, the body. What, what do we select there? Model origin, yes. So we want the Z up, uh, uh, Y the forward. I guess we can look at that way next uh, to the right side. The stock, uh, stock offset on the side. We want zero and zero. We don't want any offset. Um, we can uh, move the CNC machine wherever we want if we need some offset. Um, actually, we could have just selected no additional <laughs> offset there. So there we go. Uh, and then post process. We're going to call this uh, CRG. 
connection uh, just so there's some comments in there um, and no works uh, coordinate system offset okay there we go and then uh, the next thing we want to do when we have our setup is we want to do a 2d uh, uh, what is known as a contour infusion or a profile uh, we will select our profile which is the top um, and this little arrow tells you we're going to do an outside profile and then we will select this guy which is uh, the arrow is facing that way is in the inside profile if you were to reverse it it would do it on the outside but in this case we want an inside profile to cut out the the inside of the R there uh, okay so uh, next thing we want to do is I'm going to start out by selecting a um, a quarter inch flat end mill let's see I want to do two flute uh, three inch carbide okay there we go I uh, want to set the RPMs 12,000 because that's roughly about what uh, what it's uh, we'll be cutting at and on this case I'm going to set the speed at 60 millimeters cutting rate um, the lead in I want to be 60 uh, lead out ramp is 16 plunge if we do a plunge we want it to be slower, say 25, um, right? The coolant is disabled, we're good to go. We have our geometry. Uh, we will add tabs uh, after uh, we finish the rest of the height uh, process here. So we're gonna do about a 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 stock top, a bottom, we wanna do a negative 0.95, oops, negative 0.95 from the stock top. These are kind of my standard um, operations here, and I'll show you a different way of doing this in the, in the next. Uh, we're going to do right uh, conventional, uh, finish feed rate, yep, we want multiple passes, we want a very light 0.05 um, a pass, we're doing rapid uh, uh, cutting, a very low depth, uh, this is extremely low uh, step down for such a large, um, for such a large bit. Uh, we don't need a rough final, and order by eye lens is fine, no stock to leave, smoothing is fine. This is a very straightforward uh, rapid retract, yes that's good, uh, horizontal, we don't want any sort of lead in. Uh, we do want a ramp however, um, I like a 5 degree ramp, um, and we'll set the ramp starts at 0.05, we'll see how that goes. We'll look at it in the preview, uh, lift height, keep tool down. Yes, we want to keep the tool down, although it shouldn't really matter here. Uh, two inches is fine. Okay, we will select OK. It will compute. I have noticed in the latest version of Fusion, uh, computing the tool path seems to take longer than uh, one would expect. Uh, longer than it had in the past, let me just put it that way. All right, so here uh, we got some pretty good tool pass here. Uh, what we got? I got enough clearance there. It looks like we do. We'll find out when we simulate it. Um, all right, this is going to be fun. All right, uh, so you can see what here really we're going very shallow. Uh, the red here is the is the ramp. I found the ramp eases its way into the into the material before you hit full cutting depth, which in this case is not very deep at all. Um, and then in this case, we're doing the, the exact depth of the wood. Um, I would recommend going just a little bit deeper than the wood. Um, we'll, we will measure the wood um, once we get close and we can make any uh, tweaks and adjustments as required. All right, so let's uh, click simulate on this guy. We're gonna show the stock. Um, that is... Interesting, why is it? I was showing it uh, completed, that's why. Um, very interesting, it isn't cutting it all the way through, but anyway. Um, okay, statistics, let's see. 18 minute cut time, that's not bad at all. Um, display toolpath, all right, so if we were to click run, so it looks like it's going to start uh, with the center with the D here um, and kind of cut it out. Now, one thing to note here, I'm going to stop this because this is a pretty good time to show you this. Um, apologize for the reflection there. Uh, see how this corner is rounded? 
if we were to now hide the stock, you will see that the, the, the part is actually square. Um, but with such a large bit, you're not going to get um, the, 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 the square corners. Uh, in fact, you're not going to get a square inside corner ever with a CNC machine uh, because it is a round bit. You will always get a rounded corner um, with is the size of your dimension. Uh, in this case, uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we're not doing anything completely critical. Um, uh, we're not inlaying this. We're not uh, doing anything like that. So uh, earlier when I was in Inkscape, I mentioned that you know we're not really going to futz with the with the arcs uh, too much like I would normally if we were doing something that needed to be precisely cut together. Um, that's what makes this uh, this operation um, or this type of cutting uh, just so much uh, more rapid. Um, all right, so we can keep going. Speed this guy. Uh, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Um, I want to speed it up. All right, goes around the outside, yeah. So again, uh, inside corners, um, not gonna be uh, perfectly uh, uh, square. So the in this case, the G's corners, um, but the outside corners are gonna be perfectly uh, uh, sharp angles. Sharp angles, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, so that little dip there, that turned out pretty well. Um, I uh, did another version of the part that did not have that dip. It was just straight across. I'm not entirely sure which one I like better. Um, so heck, who knows? Maybe I'll make two. Um, but I think that looks pretty good um, from a toolpath perspective. Uh, so that's a very simple one profile uh, toolpath. Um, oh, I know one thing we did want to do. Let me go back. Uh, I definitely want to add tabs. Um, and I'll, I'll show you why. So let's go back into, uh, I wanna first edit the setup. Um, and I wanna say stock. I do wanna leave uh, sides. Um, so side offset, I wanna say um, 0.25. Um, so you can see here, uh, one thing to note, the model origin is still um, where it needs to be, it's at zero. Um, but we added a little extra to the sides. Um, and that's gonna help show the tabs a little bit better, top, bottom, okay, there we go. So we'll click okay. Now we're gonna edit, let me change the name of this guy. It's gonna be Contour uh, 0.25. So this is my naming convention. I name the processes based on the size of the bit and the type of process it is. Um, I just find it uh, just makes me remember things. And we want to go back to geometry and we want to add tabs. Um, I've had mixed success with tabs in Fusion, to be quite honest with you. I like putting the tabs where I want to put the tabs, um, and, but sometimes it doesn't work. Um, you got to have some orientations here uh, for the tabs. Um, what I mean, um, some geometry. So if this was a completely smooth uh, arc like it is here, you can see it won't let me put a tab anywhere except for where the geometry changes uh, and has some, some contours to it. Um, that's, see, I, I, it'll let you do it on flat um, areas, I believe. We'll find out. Um, but all right, so let's let's go ahead and put some tabs in. I definitely want to put a tab in the middle here, um, so you can see how the tab just popped in. Um, I would like a tab on this side as well to hold it. Um, I would like a tab on the bottom. Um, now I would like this is going to be interesting. I would like a tab right here in the middle. So if I click, oh, there you go. So it added the point. So interestingly enough, previous version of Fusion, I could not do that. Um, it would only allow me to add tabs where there were already geometries. Um, also, interestingly enough, um, I can't seem to add a tab on the curve. You can see how on the flat part I could, but on the curves I can't. So fortunately we have a geometry to hold it into place. Um, oops. Uh, ooh, no. <laughs> Wow, that is a fascinating bug. Um, all right, all I did there, friends, was hit Control Z. Um, because that tab was in a really wonky place that I didn't want it. Um, so we will not do that again. Um, okay, well, 
Let's... Finish this out. And then we'll go back and we'll look at that tab and find out, uh, see if we could ascertain why that tab looks so wonky. Alright, so we got that guy in. I actually want to put a tab here and here. Now what that's going to do is it's going to stop this inner part from uh, popping out when it finally breaks free, um, which is not something that we want. Um, everything else is fully connected, so we should be good. We'll put a tab there on the inside. Okay. Um, all right, so now it's recomputing the tool pass. Now let's see. So that tab rendered very oddly but it looks like it created the toolpath properly. So let me edit this guy, go back into geometry, tab position, so I, let's see, shift, okay, if I shift click it. Huh. You don't know why it is rendering it that way. That is very, very weird. Um, you can see it's not letting me put tabs. Okay, there, I put it nice and flat. Here. Oh, wow, that was weird. All right, hey, I got a recording of it. That was <laughs> very bizarre. Uh, there you go. I don't know what to say. All right, I have my tabs. Um, Okay, so now if we were to go back into simulate, show our stock. Okay, let it finish rendering here. Jump to the end, okay. So now what you see is, see the tabs, how it leaves that part connected to the actual stock. Now, what does that do for us? That means that when we're done cutting, um, that uh, this will not be free floating, uh, which is what we want. We don't want it rattling free um, uh, after we're done cutting. In fact, now that I think about it, we should probably put a tab here um, to keep this guy a little bit more secured, um, just like we have done with the D here, uh, the inside of the D. We don't want that popping free and flying out and, and you know maybe hitting someone or, or worse, uh, uh, causing the bit to move and bite into the, uh, the part, um, which would uh, cause problems. All right, so now here's, this is a great, uh, great, uh, <laughs> um, unfortunate, I want to put a tab here. I want the tab to be there. Uh, there, this is on an arc, it will not let me put a tab on the arc, and there is no geometry um, like it is here. So that's very unfortunate. Um, so what I will do, I will put tabs here and here um, to give this uh, guy a little bit more stability um, so that this center part here doesn't pop out. But I really wanted to just put a tab there. Now if I needed a tab there, um, I think what I would have to do is go back into the original um, part uh, into the drawing and put a point on the arc um, and then I think I could drop a, a tab there but I'm not sure not really the point here so there you go that's uh, creating the toolpath infusion okay well that was uh, the video there um, we started off in Inkscape we created the letters we dropped the letters down we fused them together and then we imported that SVG into Fusion 360 uh, extruded the the uh, drawing and then created all the tool pass and so I hope you found this useful and invaluable um, if you like the video please give it a thumbs up as always if you don't like the video appreciate a thumbs up anyway um, leave any questions or comments down below and uh, don't forget to subscribe thanks everyone have a great day